Russia's efforts to once again meddle in our presidential elections were confirmed this week, but intelligence officials now say President Trump's campaign isn't the only one that Russia has its eye on. The Washington Post is reporting that officials have uncovered Russian efforts to help Senator Bernie Sanders win the Democratic nomination, but notes that it's still unclear exactly how the Russians are interfering. Wired argues this assistance shouldn't be seen as an endorsement of Sanders, but indeed as an endorsement of chaos. Sanders' reaction to the news differs from Trump's response. Take a listen. Mr. Putin is a thug. Uh, he is an autocrat. He may be a friend of Donald Trump's. He's not a friend of mine. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded. The intelligence community has been very clear about it. They did interfere in 2016. The intelligence community is telling us they are interfering in this campaign. So I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. Here is the message. To Russia, stay out of American elections. All right, let's just be really, really clear before everybody goes off and says, hey, the Russians are involved in both of their campaigns. One of those people is is uh, is condemning it and the other one is encouraging it. Now the president has ousted the acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, replacing him with this guy, Richard Grinnell. And now retired Navy Admiral Mil William McRaven is warning, quote, when presidential ego and self-preservation are more important than national security, then there is nothing left to stop the triumph of evil. Nothing left to stop the triumph of evil. So with just a few more months before the election, America, are you listening? Joining me now, Malcolm Nance. He's an MSNBC terrorism analyst and the author of The Plot to Betray America, a book that examines in great detail Russia's efforts to influence America's elections and policy. Also, Harry Littman, former Deputy Assistant Director General, uh, Assistant uh, Attorney General, and the host of Talking Feds podcast. He's also a columnist at The Washington Post. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Malcolm, let me just start with you. The president is outraged that the intelligence committee, community gave members of Congress information that the Russia, Russians continue to interfere in the 2020 election, a fact that the two of you know very well because he thinks that Democrats will use that against him in the election. It kind of feels like he's missing the point on this. Well, he's missing the point because he fundamentally does not understand how Congress is organized or what their role is. He really thinks that it is a partisan organization in which you have to keep things from the other. He doesn't understand the role of national oversight by the representatives of the people of the United States. So when he heard Adam Schiff had the temerity to be in that meeting, he thought, then this shouldn't be brief to him. He's a Democrat. Donald Trump does not understand the Constitution or what this nation is made of. And that's dangerous because he's going to probably start with his new political commissar that he sent to the director of national intelligence to withholding information from the representatives of the people. And that, of course, could end up in disaster if we have a terrorist attack or another mass shooting in the United States in which intelligence could have stopped it, but he stovepiped it to just his followers. Okay, and, and Harry, that's not a, um, th that's not sort of a, a weird idea that Malcolm's got. In 9-11, the CIA had information about the attackers that it did not share with the FBI. And the thinking now, there have been books and, and movies made about this, is that if they shared that information, uh, there may have been an ability to prevent 9-11. And the Department of, the, the Director of National Intelligence was created out of that failure, the idea that there needs to be coordination between our intelligence uh, d departments. So that person who heads that should be possibly one of the smartest brains in intelligence that this country has to offer. And a lot of people think Grinnell is not that guy. 
and he's not an experienced guy. He's one thing and one thing only. He's a Trump loyalist. And the whole government now, as Malcolm says, the new commissar, he, he, he's, is actually on a probe to root out all, all people who are disloyal. Look, McMaster says there's nothing to stop evil. Strong, dramatic words, but it's really true. The key thing that you said, um, Ali, is facts. Right now, Trump really seems on a campaign to scrub out facts that are unfavorable for him uh, in, anywhere on the American scene. That really is the benchmark of the tyrant. That really is Stalinesque. Now, I'm not saying it will succeed. You have the courts, perhaps, to, to, to come in, as happened this week. But we're talking about really a renewed, not renewed, a torqued up effort, which didn't seem possible to literally scrub out history from the Mueller probe to the intel to intelligence to Colonel Vindman's truthful testimony, if it seems unfavorable to him. It is head turning. And Malcolm, there's some technical stuff that is important here. Grinnell can only serve until March 11th unless the president uh, names someone who is to be uh, uh, nominated or uh, approved by the Senate. But the president could actually name someone who doesn't get approved by Senate to keep this clock running so that this appointee is always acting. And that means not accountable to Congress. And that means, once again, like the president would like to have his own personal attorney general, the president might have his own personal director of national intelligence that would be actually dangerous to the country well it would be dangerous to the United States but you know if I were an ex KGB director in an enemy state like Russia as Vladimir Putin is I would encourage all of this Donald Trump himself is dismantling US intelligence. He is putting his own personal opinions above facts. He trusts Vladimir who's Putin that good for, and his Malcolm? intelligence agencies. It's what's it good for? It's not good for anyone. You don't know what nefarious plots and plans are being carried out against the United States right now. And the people who are the professionals who pass that data up the chain of command may be stiltified. They may get to a point where that data won't go any further because the political commissar is too busy trying to take out p individuals within the community because he doesn't like their opinion. You know, in Israel, the Mossad chiefs are amongst the biggest critics of the government because their obligation is to tell the truth. And so are our m members of the intelligence community. But right now, Grinnell's job is to root out enemies of the state of the czar, you know, of Donald Trump in the exact same way that any other petty third world dictator would do it. And we are all in danger because of this decision. All right, Harry, is there any is there any firewall here? Is there any way to stop this? this is the second week in the row that you and I are talking about a, a government agency or government department that is being politicized uh, so that it can be controlled by the president. Is there a backstop? The courts the ballot box but the two worst places for this to happen are intelligence and justice and that's where and it's happening yep yeah. mm -hmm. former deputy assistant attorney general harry Littman and msnbc terror analyst malcolm nance guys thanks very much this is a serious thanks. matter that americans have got to take seriously